Where'd you go? I miss you so. <laughs> as soon as I hit the record button, there was like a bunch of popping sounds in my neighborhood. It was really weird. It was me. That's why I turned my video off. I believe it. You popping some gangsters in there? Popping caps. Popping tags. <laughs> I knew that was coming. <laughs> I don't have twenty dollars in my pocket though. I don't. I don't either. But I, I mean, you want to go thrifting? <laughs> I don't even have pockets. <laughs> I, I don't either. Well, welcome to women's clothing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you want to hear something weird? Or well, waiting on your video to see if it populates? Yeah. Um. So I actually tweeted about that one time about having not having pockets on my pants. I don't even remember the exact tweet. But there was some lady that um, replied to it, and she, like, has a company where they put pockets on things that you wouldn't expect pockets to be. And I was like, it's really weird that she found me, because, you know, I only have, like, 80 followers on Twitter. And, like, she's, like, <laughs> obsessively <laughs> searching for the word pocket. <laughs> Hashtags work, people. Hashtags work. I did see a hack on Pinterest because I'm addicted. Um, This would not work for everyone though. So I'll just put that out there. But this, this woman was like talking about how women's clothes don't have any pockets. And, um, and she was like, hack buy boys, skinny jeans. They fit just like your skinny jeans, but they have pockets. If I wore skinny jeans, I could probably relate. That's true. <laughs> but I was like, maybe I need to buy boys' pants. <laughs> but I mean, that makes sense. That makes sense because there was, uh, I think it was two Black Fridays ago. Um, I made the mistake of like passing by the bins, you know, that just hold lots of random stuff. And so there was this whole bin of socks. And you know how oh. I feel about socks. We love socks. We stand. <sighs> we love socks. <laughs> Um, so anyways, I pulled out a pair of socks and I was like, I, I could use a new pair, you know, for tennis shoes and all that fun stuff. Cause they were just, um, the ankle socks or whatever. So I pull out a pair and this lady looks at me and she goes, you know, those are boys socks, right? Like lady, I wear size eight and a half women's shoe, <laughs> please. I can fit in these socks and they do, they fit perfectly. Wear them to practice every Saturday. That's amazing, and I think it's a great segue to our topic for today. Outrage. (gasps) What? Is that like road rage? Except outside. Except on the internets. (laughs) Wait, Casey. Yes. Where are we? The internets. The internets? The interwebs. Ooh, like cobwebs, but for hate. The World Wide Web. Um, I guess that means we should welcome our audience to the podcast that you somehow stumbled upon, which is Millennial Monologue, in case you're curious. And while you contemplate how you got here, we're going to cue theme music. love it it's my favorite part to edit and just <laughs> in the song and just watch us dance <laughs> da, 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 da. everybody dance now oh my god casey i can't even deal with the internet cannot cannot Mm-mm. but we will I guess. Even though we can't. For now. Yeah. Are we too old for the internet? No, I don't think so. But, like, once we get rich off the internet, then we'll get off the internet. Oh, okay. Okay, got you. Got you. Yeah. By the way, I'm talking to Casey Lowenthal. Oh, yeah. And that's Morgan Humberg over there with her bright and shining voice of pure sunshine. Deuces. I bet it sounds really shiny because I am talking all through my nose right now. Um, 
Diane would be very unimpressed. <sighs> it's all about balance. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so we are talking about outrage culture, a.k.a. cancel culture, a.k.a. call-out culture. A.k.a. boomers on the internet. No, I'm kidding. I'm not <laughs> AKA attacking. A.k.a. also any angry person on the internet who takes their rage out on acting people who don't deserve it. Yes, very much so. Or maybe do deserve it. I'm not here to make that judgment call. I mean, everyone has a bad day. You know, Mm -hmm. we're all out of popular or unpopular beliefs. But uh, sometimes you should just not post it on the internet, you know? Yeah. 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 But it's fine. It's whatever. It's fine. It's fine. It's whatever. (laughs) But, yes. So, all of these things we're talking about, Morgan and I thought it would be interesting to unpack and discuss as Morgan packs up her house. Um, I'm so clever. Oh, my God. Uh, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm definitely not unpacking my feelings. So, I'm going to pack up something. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) welcome um, to therapy um yes thinking i need to find a therapist but that is another another story for another pod for another day um anyway let's get back on track my sweet jesus um all these things we're talking about outrage culture cancel culture call out culture They're all very synonymous, um, but we thought it would be interesting to talk about because being millennials, being millennials (laughs) on the internet by choice, and also for a lot of reason by necessity, um, it's just, it's very interesting to me that our generation are the front runners for trying to decide and determine Social media, not manners. What's the word I'm looking for? Etiquette? Yes. Thank you. Yes. I win. <laughs> One ding, for ding. Morgan, <laughs> five for Casey. <laughs> um, no, that makes sense. I was just thinking about what you're talking. I was thinking how our generation is kind of like the first I got to experience like the move from MySpace, which Gen Z people probably don't even know about, and Facebook, which... I feel like the uh, the younger half of the millennial generation, as well as Gen Z, kind of look at Facebook and just think they don't really need it. Like They kind of don't need that drama in their life. And <laughs> I was thinking about how MySpace used to have the top friends and that, that created like real life drama, you know, like you would yes. just change your friends and then in real life you would fight. But Facebook put it all online all the time. Yeah. Well, and I guess that's a a thing we can just kind of jump into a little bit. I noticed as we've gotten more, because part of the, I don't want to say problem, part of the situation with social media and so many people of the world being so closely connected just at the tips of your fingers, um, which is bananas if you think about it. But I like bananas. (laughs) They're delicious. Uh, (laughs) That's a sound bite just waiting to happen. Oh, God. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) No, I did it again. Uh, (laughs) What was I saying? Um, Um, Social media has kind of outpaced our ability to create etiquette and societal norms around it. So that's something I find very interesting. Um, Cause we're anthropologists now, Morgan. Yes, we do. We study ants. Yes. I mean, humans. <laughs> <laughs> we study human ant hybrids. Mm-hmm. 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 We're talking about you, Ant-Man. Yep. And wasp. I don't remember what you are. I didn't see the movie, but you know, it's fine. 
Um, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I think that's very interesting because where I keep rambling, I'm sorry. Mercury's in retrograde. I'm gonna. I didn't used to believe in it, but this this one's been getting me hard. Uh, that was not an appropriate way to say that sentence. That's what she said. <laughs> I, I can't even correct myself. Uh, <laughs> but if you want to know our thoughts on Mercury and Retrograde, go listen to our last squibs and soliloquies. But anyway, anyway, I totally lost my train of thought. I mean, that's fine. I was thinking <laughs> um, we're just going to sit this the rest of this podcast in complete silence. You're just going to listen to like 40 minutes of silence because you need a break, audience. No. Um, <laughs> thinking about social media. You know what? I had a thought, and I lost it, too. Well, this has been a great great run, Morgan. <laughs> e- you, me, and Elizabeth Warren just were not appreciated in our time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. So I oh. guess that can... Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, 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 no. You go. You go. With your... No, I had a new thought. If, you, if you've oh. figured out your thought. Okay, I was just going to talk about how, like the way social media was built. So I think, um, while, you know, we haven't always had, uh, news coverage worldwide or whatever. So people didn't have always like access to know the kind of hate that's going on, you know, in the world in reality. Um, but I also feel like people kind of didn't (laughs) come off really badly, but they didn't, uh, have as many, like rages or like angry fights but social media kind of gives them that wall to where they're protected themselves like as individuals so all of that hate is just like spewed out at once if it's that like makes a, sense. it's a branch of cyberbullying. i feel all of this yeah. like call out culture and cancel culture kind yeah. of bullshit because you're just violently attacking these people incessantly and getting a lot of other people behind the screen to do the same thing. And it's just. I mean, most of the time it's people you don't even know, you know, like you've never met this person. And it's for no reason that you're getting so upset in my mind. I'm sure you think there's a reason Mm -hmm. and you create your own reality Um, but anyway, I guess where I'm going is the way I view all this stuff is people are so unhappy and, you know, there's, I don't know the statistic, but it's like statistically more people in our generation and our age range and younger deal with depression and anxiety. And I feel that social media is a huge factor in that, but it's like, kind of going off what you were saying, all these people are angry inside and they want to take it out on somebody else and they have more of like a low risk way to do it through Mm -hmm. the internet. Yeah. And so that's just like breeding all this hate in the cesspool that that lives in comment threads. And like, like, for example, I, so a little bit of sidebar, if you don't know me that well, I love makeup and I love watching makeup tutorials on YouTube. I vehemently hate I don't even think think I pronounced that word correctly but whatever I hate how much drama and anger and hate is in like the quote unquote beauty community and it's like people telling Jaclyn Hill to fucking kill herself after her eyeshadow blended patchy like do you realize the context of what you're saying and like if you're so unhappy that you have to tell anybody to kill themselves in a comment or a tweet like i'm dead ass get help (laughs) like yeah 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 well it's uh, it's kind of interesting that we're talking about this right now because i'm gonna make a bachelor reference and as i hear the entire audience go oh god (sighs) but um they just had the um women tell all episode and they did something that they've never done before um they had the, not the previous Bachelorette, but two Bachelorettes ago, um, who was also the first 
black bachelorette, which was amazing. Rachel Lindsay. She's still one of my favorites. Go, Rachel. Um, but they had her come out and read these like DMs and like just private messages that you know audiences have been sending to the contestants and like it's nasty and they're talking they're just saying go kill yourself like of course you would play the black card or why are you even I mean it's just nasty messages and they don't even know these people they don't even know I just I don't understand it and so I guess to kind of specify more of what we're talking about i listened to a podcast um from the she podcast with jordan lee dooley i highly recommend it um she calls it i forget what she calls it but like what she brands her podcast as it's like a self-improvement but that's not how she calls it but anyway Mm -hmm. besides the point um She and her husband did a quick little podcast episode on outrage culture. And I never really thought about it that way until... Because I just... I try to avoid drama on the internet. I'm not about it. Um, I love it. I think it's ridiculous. Um, (laughs) But they were talking about this Peloton bike ad that went out right before the holidays... The, basically, the whole premise of the commercial is a man gets his significant other a Peloton bike, and people are like, how dare he get her a Peloton bike? That's like saying that she's fat. That's saying that she needs to exercise. That's saying negative body image. And then on the flip side, you have people, well, the woman in the ad is already thin. It already looks fit. Why couldn't they use a plus-size person? And it's like, that's a valid point. Everybody exercise is beneficial to all people and not only thin people like exercise a lot of thin people don't exercise and aren't as healthy as you think but that I'm getting on my soapbox I'm going to slide off but (laughs) um, I'm sorry Morgan I'm feeling ranty today no no it's okay because we're talking about rage (laughs) we're hulking it up here today yes But so it's like, one, you can never please anybody when it comes to outrage culture Mm -hmm. because people are going to nitpick until they find something to be upset about. And you're seeing a lot more, quote unquote, influencers. That's such an obnoxious word. You're seeing a lot more influencers of like, okay, you all want me to be authentic online, but anytime I'm the slightest bit authentic, people attack me. Mm -hmm. and I just I mean that's kind of the thing like like on the on the bachelor the the tweets and the messages and stuff like you're attacking someone for their personality you know they can't change who they are not to mention the fact you're watching a tv show which is already edited for drama and to make drama look bad right so what do your words have to do with it like Why do you need to go out and attack somebody else? Mostly because you've probably got a problem in your own life. And I think that's another thing is like people just take it way too personally. And there are definitely messages that it's that are really hard to ignore. And that kind of cultivates the the social anxieties and stuff, Mm -hmm. Um, especially for the younger generation. Like there's so much bullying in school nowadays and there's almost nothing people can do about it because it's online it might be through snapchat that still exists um (laughs) where the evidence is you know just completely wiped or maybe a kid feels like they can't share that with their parent that they're getting bullied so you know they end up just deleting it trying to ignore it but really it's hurting them the thing with cyberbullying that we're all we've all realized within the past five years is one, one to not be dramatic or extreme, it can be deadly. Um, two, it follows you everywhere you go because we're all addicted to our phones. Yes. And three, like, how can, in the case of kids being bullied, how can parents enforce that it doesn't happen? How can school officials enforce that it doesn't happen? I know that's a big topic that people are trying to tackle. Mm-hmm. But definitely the, the outrage culture just kind of like enforces that. And it, 
it somehow makes people want to be angrier in a way. Yes, that that that's so true. You, you <laughs> hit the nail on the head. <laughs> yes, podcast over. Pod drop. <laughs> <laughs> There's a very fine line with, like, pointing out things that could be better. People are going to get so mad at me for saying this. But I guess that's part of the problem. It's almost like people don't take a second to realize how far things have come. So I see this a lot with, like, um, one example that's coming right to my mind is someone shared an article about how companies are trying to be better at diversifying gender. And so they're saying that like they're like the phrase they're using is women and non-binary. And this person was like, this isn't good enough. Like it's all these other things. And I'm like, okay, I need to educate myself because I don't know exactly what you're talking about. That's, that's on me. I'm going to do that. On the same token, wouldn't you be much happier if you looked at things in a positive way of like, oh my god, look at this progress we made and it's going to pave the way for more progress. Instead of like shitting on people left and right about how it's never good enough and how if somebody makes a mistake once or accidentally dead names somebody and then immediately apologizes, like just in still in the scope of like LGBTQ+. Or, like, accidentally misgender somebody because they're learning. Yeah. It's like, when you put yourself on the internet, and we've joked about this with our podcast handbook and, like, all this other bullshit, because we don't give a shit. But it's almost like when you put yourself on the internet, you're never allowed to be wrong. You're never, but also you're never supposed to, like, go back and amend what you say. But if you don't amend what you say, then, like then it's it's impossible yeah yeah no i mean you're you're totally right on track there saying like i was just gonna make a comment about how millennials especially i feel like we have been through a lot of technological changes and i mean we just absorbed it and Mm -hmm. like giant chunks of changes and we just keep taking it in and shaking it in so anytime something small happens we're like but We could do more, but we could do better. Um, I think that also goes hand in hand with we've in our lifetime and in our generation, we've seen a lot of societal change, both good and bad, not just technology. Like, right. We've seen gay marriage legalized. We've seen people try to criminalize um, same sex marriage and all this stuff. And, it's just like this constant push and pull. And I feel like that's just reflected online of like, you said it earlier, people just, it's breeding unhappiness mm-hmm. and hate. I mean, that's what it's, I, my millennial mind just keeps like holding on to what I said earlier about there not being as much hate in the past as there is today. <laughs> but it's, you know, it's, you can see it. Like, then you can see it. I mean, there was obviously a lot of hate back then, but they took those little steps and and they appreciated them and they they were awarded. You know, every little bill that was passed, every uh, person of color who could get into a public school back then, you know, it, it was hard, but little by little, they appreciated it. And here, we just don't appreciate anything. And then we put it online and suddenly everyone says, well, that's right. I don't appreciate that either. And it, it is, it's breeding. We are breeding the coronavirus on the <laughs> social media. Well, and I guess to even piggyback off that, I didn't even think about this until listening to you talk just now. I've joked about myself doing this. I read a headline, like, and it said this. I think so many of us do that. And that also breeds misinformation. And then... I, the way I like to explain myself and my relationship with social media is I was like a normal kid or whatever. And then the pendulum swung really far into liberal territory, I guess is a good way to explain it. And like, 
I would get so mad at people online if they voiced their opinion, if it was different than mine. Like my mom and I butt heads about this all the time and we've gotten a lot better to just like, now we listen to each other. We genuinely listen to each other and we'll have conversations. But I like to explain myself as like the pendulum is finally coming back and swinging more in the middle. Like I've calmed down. I'm growing up um, just having more empathy for people. And also just trying to inform myself because I mean people are reading bullshit headlines about the coronavirus for example and then they're like outrage culturing at all these people who aren't doing things quote unquote right or like are Mm -hmm. fucking it up or like you get what I'm saying yeah yeah no I do um it's it's kind of It kind of goes along the lines of, you know, don't say anything nice if you don't have anything nice to say. Uh, Or don't say anything nice. Don't say anything if you don't have anything nice to say. (laughs) Never say anything nice. Ever. (laughs) Um, But it's just, don't, don't assume. And that's a big problem that creates the outrage. People make a lot of assumptions about things, about other people that you used to know or that you don't even know that could live on the other side of the world that have had a whole different life experience than you and just because they're drowning in hate doesn't mean you have to go down with them and it doesn't mean you have to push them further into hate either um i know for me personally this is something that i struggle with because i am extremely sarcastic to the top to the t and sarcasm does not read well online at all especially (laughs) what i Um, am shocked yeah yeah and then people will snap at me for something that maybe i didn't mean to say and i might try and edit or delete it because i don't want it to be taken that way it wasn't meant to be taken that way and then you get attacked because you edited or deleted something mm -hmm. and even if you apologize and say you didn't mean it that way people are still so angry at you that they misinterpreted it that they're just you know but it can't be their fault exactly and that's another problem is that we can't take blame for things yeah nobody wants to be wrong Mm -hmm. it's just and it's so easy to dehumanize someone online because and just see a 2d version of them and just giving yourself that out to be like to just say shit to people and it's like remember there's a person behind the screen Uh in all cases and well most of the time unless it's twitter then you have a lot of bots a lot of bots (laughs) maybe anyways maybe if you need to just cyber bully just cyber bully bots (laughs) i think they'll block you if you do that i think they actually like uh block your account like maybe we should all take a lesson from bots block the people doing this Oh, dear. AI is a whole other technology that we can talk about another day. That's terrifying. No, I meant, like, block the people who are being outragey and mean. Oh, no. No. I got you. I got you. Okay. What if the robots are the people that are outraging? It's probably Russians just trying to work us all up. Truth. Truth. Putin? (sighs) Eh. Friggin' Putin. He's listening to us right now. Oh, I know. I know, for sure. Probably with his shirt off, too. Drinking, like, a whiskey, sitting on a horse. Yeah, I can with imagine all it. of his dogs around him? That That's how I know that, like, Putin has humanity inside. He <laughs> loves dogs. He loves and animals. And now I'm being... Yeah. I mean, now <laughs> I, we're being, like, cliche white bitches, and maybe people will attack us for it. But, like, whatever. We like dogs. Yeah. Deal with it. Yeah, even if people do attack us for it, at least they'll be um, leaving a review and or commenting and communicating with us. Hey, hey, remember, people? That's how this goes. It's it's a two-way street. It's a conversation. Conversation. Have a dialogue with us. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. That's our new theme song. Ow! <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's good. See, we're already, like, revved up from outraging about this outrage. Because it's it's just ridiculous how angry people get over nothing. 
maybe this is partially because of having low self-esteem for all of my childhood. But, like, whenever I scroll past things on Facebook of, like, just articles or whatever, and it's like, this has 3,000 comments. I always think to myself, why did you feel the need to comment no one cares? Um, because asteroids? Oh. Yeah, yeah. Asteroids are important. Yeah, I don't know. But I, I get what you're saying. Just these random articles, a lot of them fake news articles uh, that people feel the need to, like, comment and be, this is stupid. Or, like, I don't know why this example came into my head, but just go with me. Like, say there's a BuzzFeed article about the 10 best taco recipes. Yum. And then you'll have people... In the comments who just get so enraged. Yeah. They're, They're like, like, why would you pick beef over chicken? Well, my my abuela makes it this way. And this is the only way. And it's like, then just make it that way and enjoy your taco. Just, yeah. don't. Do, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything. Has anybody right watched that time. Has anybody watched Bambi? Has anybody listened to Thumper? Because Morgan and I did. And we're good people. And I cried so hard. We're not going to talk about that. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Um, Hands raised. If you're excited for a live action Bambi, nobody's hand should be raised right now. That's not a thing that should be made into reality. You put your hand down, Casey. (laughs) I didn't have my hand up. Okay, but it looked like you were sticking it. You just you had a little shoulder action, you know? I worried about you. I, I was uncomfortable at the idea. No, okay. Me too. As um, we all should be. And, you know, if they posted that, everybody would be so fucking outraged and would be calling out Disney to be hashtag canceled. Oh, yeah. Well, that's another thing. Um, I don't want to get too much on, like, a race topic, but... The live action Little Mermaid and how there was news. I don't actually, I didn't actually confirm this or not. Do they have a person of color playing as Ariel or? At least on Broadway or something. Okay. I think that's what it was. People turned it into a thing when it didn't need to be a thing. And it was it was weird to see people insulting Disney because yes they've always had issues with diversity yada mm-hmm. yada yada That's mostly not because well they're remaking content that was created during those terrible hateful times so mm-hmm. we shouldn't be viewing it as them you know not paying attention but when they do make those steps we should be awarding it and not saying oh well finally Disney did something to you know come up to date or whatever and they just insult and insult and insult and i'm like but they're like trying (laughs) yeah like and i think there's something important to remember that disney is a corporation so they're going to do what makes them money but also at the same time if you don't like it vote with your dollar don't give disney money and then that will speak way louder than any comment you could have ever post but Going back to the cancel thing about, like, casting the Little Mermaid as a person of color, take a step back if you're upset about that and think about, one, why you're so upset Mm -hmm. over a fictional thing. Two, why do you feel the need to take away joy from other groups of people being represented? Mm Mm-hmm. Three, why are you so... Why do you need Ariel to be white? She's a fucking mermaid. (laughs) Mermaids aren't real. Casey, all mermaids are white because they're glowing beacons of light under the ocean. Don't you know? Oh, they see any sunlight, so that's why they're all white. Is that what you're saying? (laughs) They're all in the depths of the sea, so they're like those creepy angler fish. Yeah, they have like I, the light. Look, I don't know if anyone's seen Harry Potter, but those are the kinds of mermaids that I imagine. Jesus Christ! And they're <laughs> terrifying green. monsters. Yeah, they're green. I don't know, but I mean, and that's um, is it? <laughs> I hate to stick on Disney, but isn't it Disney who's also coming out with a movie? 
that has um, an LGBTQ character? Or is it Pixar? Well, I know that happened. This was a very similar conversation around the the making of the live action Beauty and the Beast mm-hmm. with what's his face playing LeFou. And people were again mad on both sides. And it was just like, okay, one, if they didn't tell you he was gay, you would have had no idea. True. There was there was he wasn't in a relationship in the film. He makes one comment that could be looked at as homosexual or like whatever. But also I kind of fear, not fear, Jesus Christ, I feel more for the people in the LGBTQ plus community who were like, okay, but we finally get a gay character and you're making him the fool. Right. Quite literally translates to the fool. And it's like, that's the kind of thing where you can be like, congratulations on doing that. This is how you can be better. I mm-hmm. did leadership conference when I was in middle school and one of the things they taught us and I've taken it with me ever since that day because it's I feel like it always works you give people they said a smile and a mile so you give them a genuine like compliment or something you genuinely liked and then constructive criticism yeah and That makes you happy. It makes the other person happy. Not even just happy, but, like, it's a better environment for change. Yeah. I feel. No, you're right. I mean, and that's the thing that people are missing is that they go straight to what's wrong rather than, you know, seeing even the smallest thing as as any sort of compliment. It's just immediate anger. Like, you could have done so much better. Mm-hmm. Um, which is... Um, it's interesting. Right now, uh, in my college courses, I'm doing some like peer evaluations. So I get to see classmates work and it's all online. So I don't really get to meet these people ever. Um, but I get to see their work. And then my peer evaluation is I have to give them something to do that they need to do better next time, which is hard for me. It's terribly hard because all I just want to do is say, you're doing such a great job you know, keep going. This is awesome. This is what this course is for is to learn yada, yada, yada. Yeah. But you know, you could probably, I don't know, use less text or or use more visuals. And that's just something that people forget is to compliment, give, give somebody something so that they can give you something. Yeah. And like, I don't know. It's well on even when you're talking about, um, like LGBTQ matters, you mentioned how it's, you know, um, people might use the wrong pronoun, but they're learning, they're trying. It's not because they they purposely did it. I mean, there are people who out there who did that and they're terrible people. Yeah, that's but, um, not cool. No. But if someone accidentally slipped up, don't just get mad at them. Just be like, hey, just so you know, I'm, I go by this. And be like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. And you just say, oh, it's totally fine. Just, you know. Yeah. Keep it in mind. It's fine. Just be fine with it. Don't immediately flip the bird like somebody cut you off on the highway, you know? Well, and I feel like a lot of people feel like they can't correct people. And Mm -hmm. that goes back to another thing that I very strongly believe and that I'm working on practicing within myself is empowering yourself in situations. Um. And also, I feel like if we did that, a lot of people would nitpick less and wouldn't find the need to watch a 30-minute YouTube video just 0.5 seconds to find something that pisses them off. Like, if you empower yourself, that that helps you in every aspect of your life. Um, And I feel like people who don't feel empowered... It just manifests in different ways. And for a lot of people, that comes out as anger and comes out as hate toward other people for whatever reason. Um, But I think we've touched on this before, is the way people treat you is a reflection of how they feel about themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's, I guess that's one of the things I'm trying to get across is it's, 
Um, obviously, if you're having a bad day, it's hard not to take it out on somebody else. That's just the way we are. That's the way we react to things. But if you're the person receiving that, just remember to think about what that other person might have been through. Just like, I don't want to say don't take it too seriously or don't take it personally because maybe you did do something wrong. Like you didn't buy chocolates for your girlfriend on Valentine's Day, (laughs) which is rude. But, you know, just don't don't take it too hard and just think about what that other person is going through think about especially if you know them think about how they grew up think about what kind of situations they've been through that would make them that way i mean we're not all therapists so we can't you know well uh, and also take solace in the things that you know are true about yourself like mm -hmm. If you're getting attacked online for people saying all these things, take a step back, truly take a long, hard look at yourself in the mirror and be like, is this something I do not like about myself? Is this something I want to change? Is this a, is this coming from a place of love? Is this coming from like, and just go from there. I mean, this, this is, I saw, I saw a meme toward the end of 2019 of people basically calling out call out culture, which I thought was very interesting of like, this is not constructive. Let's not do it anymore. And this was right around the time that this podcast originally aired, but I only ended up listening to it like last month. And one of the things was like, we're going into 2020. We're not, we're not throwing people in the dumpster anymore. We're putting that shit through recycling. (laughs) (laughs) That's true. That's so true though. I, I think there's a lot of things that are going on that, that are trying to, you know, rid of that. I think people have started just kind of taking a breath before they respond. Um, maybe even they've stopped texting people altogether. Sorry about that. Um, <laughs> also. <no. laughs> but I think it's also kind of going along with the way the culture is kind of flowing and how people are. I wouldn't say people are dropping social media but they're just trying not to pay too much attention to it. I mean, there's still going to be social media influencers and YouTubers and they're always going to exist, but... But people are realizing how toxic it can be to your mental health and they're also realizing that it's not real. Mm -hmm. It's not real life. And I think that's a huge important distinction is you never see the whole picture on social media. Right. You never see the whole person on social media. And... God, take a shot every time we say social media. Uh, (laughs) Don't do that. Social Uh, media, social media, social media. (laughs) Are y'all drunk yet? (laughs) Hell yes, because it's a Friday. (laughs) Yeah, but like, I don't even remember where I was going. (laughs) But I think because people are realizing that there's better things to do with your time than to argue with somebody you don't know in a comment section. And that kind of reminds me of a quote I read once of, kind of to go along, but also maybe challenge what I just said. Um, you don't argue with people to to affect the person you're arguing with. You do it to affect and or stand up for the people around that are listening and that maybe don't feel empowered enough to be in that conversation. So I guess look at it in that perspective. Instead of it devolving into just calling each other names and gross insults that aren't going to benefit anybody and ever think about what you're doing and why you're doing it. And is there a better way to get that message across than a comment section? Right. Right. I mean, there's obviously you should always, you know, stand up for what's right, what, what you believe in. And I mean, you know, keep your personal stuff close, but there's no reason to to spew hate while you're doing it. You know, who said that quote of like, hate doesn't drive out hate. Only love can do that. Darkness or no wait, Darkness can't drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate can't drive out hate. Only love can do that. Is that Martin Luther King Jr.? No, it was me. Oh, look at you. I'm very wise for my age. Um, I was a cliche millennial and was like, was this MLK or was this Dumbledore? Definitely Dumbledore. 
greatest wizard who ever lived. Um, I don't know for sure. I don't want to give a, an answer on that because I don't want to be. Also, Dumbledore was gay. I refuse to watch Harry Potter now. That's just rude. <laughs> no, no. Age. no. <laughs> Do you see how silly that is, people? Um, no, no, I don't. I really like to yell at people on the internet, Casey. Yell at them. Everybody, everybody goes through that phase of the internet. Oh, yeah, for sure. For sure. But now I'm at a point in my life where all caps in a text or on a status just doesn't mean anything. Like, I still feel like I'm reading it as someone shouting, but at the same time, maybe they just left their caps on. It happens. <laughs> I, I pretty much only use all caps when I'm writing things if I'm super excited. Mm -hmm. I really don't. It's very rarely that I use it for anger. <laughs> See, we've already recycled rage into excitement. Dun, dun, dun. We have totally modified the meaning of all caps. All the world's problems are solved. You're welcome. Done. Pod dropped. Thank you. Success. Come again. Thank you. Come again. What's that from? It's from something. That's also a very millennial thing. I do that all the time. <laughs> I'm so bad with names. <laughs> but yeah, people, we I feel like I'm just talking in circles, but come from places of love, empower yourself, and you won't feel the need to cancel people. And remember that a circle is round. It never ends. And that's how long I want to be your friend. <laughs> Girl Scouts. I love, I love that. <laughs> well, how does it go? It's like um, one friend is silver, the other's gold. Yeah, so a circle's round. It never ends. That's how long I want to be your friend. Wait. One is silver and the other is gold. What's that first? What's I'm, the first statement? I'm gonna look it up. Cause I remember like the pledge. On my honor, I will, I will try, try to serve God, God. Oh, religion and my country, and my country <laughs> to help people at all times and to live by the Girl, the Girl Scout, Scout law. law. Yeah, but what's that? What is that first line in that song? Is it make new friends? Is that what Yes. That make new friends, but keep you... the old. One is silver and the other's gold. A circle's round. It never ends. That's how long I want to be your friend. Yes. And then it goes, this is the song that never uh -huh. ends. Yes, it goes on and on, my friends. Some people started singing it, not knowing what it was, and still continue singing it forever just because this is the song that... That's all I got. I don't oh, remember I the rest. It's really hard. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Um... Oh. Giggles galore. That was a good time. Yeah. But to kind of um, put a little tinge of conspiracy into things, the the patriotism of forcing all young children to have, and I I read somewhere that the United States is the only country that makes children recite anything like the Pledge of Allegiance every day. I Even Russia it. doesn't do it. I believe it. But they don't need to do it. Their people are in so much live in so much fear. You know, they don't have to. The, the, uh, but also I a mean, lot of our people do. I stopped so, saying the Pledge of Allegiance at school after I got to high school. What do you think? Leave us a comment. Rate, <laughs> subscribe. What about our international listeners? Um, yeah, no, you're right. It's like we're trying to force patriotism into people. Which is why we all hate the government. Dun, dun, dun. Or it's just me. Yeah. It's fine. It's, it's a lot. It's a lot of millennials. It is. You know what? Forcing that patriotism, <clears throat> Mr. Democratic and Mr. Republican Party, um, you created liberals. That's what happened. That's, 
you created liberals, created the Green Party, you created, I don't know, maybe you brought the Whig Party back through it. Um, yeah, that's what that did. Just makes I like to have rebel. tea parties. Oh, tea. I like tea. <laughs> don't dump it in the ocean, though. I don't think the fish enjoy it. It's bad for the environment, Casey. Have, what you, ever, have you ever seen online, like, somebody broke down based on a, how much... Like, the way tea was made that back then of, like, bricks of tea. And they calculated how much it would have cost. Like, how much they threw in the ocean based on what ship that size would have been carrying. Am I making any sense? It was, like, I think... I'm also kind of pulling this number out of thin air. But I think it was, like, millions of dollars of tea that they dumped in the harbor. That makes me so happy. Rebels. Again, I wish we could have rebellions like that, but, you know, just not ruining the oceans. Well, so. I'm like, <laughs> that, that didn't hurt anybody. Nobody got beat up. No. It was just some tea. Just America speaking its mind. Yeah. That's I mean, kind of. That's, that's a kind of form of peaceful protest. There are some that are more peaceful. Mm-hmm. Definitely. That's a whole that's a whole other topic though. Protest. That's true, that's true, that's true. That's real life. That is real life action. Not getting online and, you know, typing F U C K over and over and over. Um which I just deleted as my status, it's fine. <laughs> uh <laughs> children. It's not for children. I can only imagine if I actually post a status that was just like fuckity fuck, 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 fuck. And then like fucking fuck, 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 fuck. <laughs> all of my fuck. high school teachers or anybody that I've ever worked with in the past that are on my Facebook would just be like, Morgan, are, are you okay? Is, did somebody hack you? <laughs> I think you've been hacked. No. <sighs> fuck you. <laughs> Outrage. <sighs> Anger. <laughs> flames it. flames on, on the sides of my face <laughs> <sighs> if you don't know what that's from you're too young for this podcast basically what I've learned from this discussion is that if you have something mean to say put it on MySpace because Tom is still there waiting for some sort of interaction <laughs> don't be mean to Tom he was everyone's friend I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, don't be mean to Tom. But uh, don't be mean to anyone. Don't be mean. Remember our rule. Be there nice. are no rules except don't hurt people or animals. Yes. Very important. Mm-hmm. That's our only rule. Yeah. I think we've kind of run out of steam on outrage because we're just like, <sighs> be nice to people. That's yeah. really good. We've, we've, we have come full circle. We've come from, you know, arguing about why it's stupid to just being like, okay, we all know it's stupid. So let's just take a breath and let it go. On a touch of sound. <laughs> mm-hmm. Or to refer oh. to our squibs and soliloquies, the Grinch, just letting all of your stress out. <laughs> yes. Uh, it's even better if you, like, sit in your car at a stoplight and, you know, just let it out. Just scream. Scream so loud that the person next to you is like, should I call 911? And you just give them a thumbs up and you smile and nod. <laughs> it's a Monday. No. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Have a good cathartic cry. Yeah. Those, it's important to cry. No matter what gender you are, crying is supposed to happen. It mm -hmm. needs to happen. Your it's body healthy. has emotions that need to come out. Mm -hmm. My dog cries at me all the time. <laughs> Love it so much. It is so great to hear her emotions. Podcast host canceled because she's sarcastic about her pet. <gasps> what? I would never be sarcastic. I don't even understand the deep, dark deaths. Deaths? The deaths of sarcasm. <laughs> Oh, that reminds me of a meme I saw. It was, or maybe it was like an actual screen grab from a a news thing. But it was like, stabbing victims' last words. 
What are you going to do? Stab me? <laughs> that would be me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sometimes I'm a little much. I get it. It's fine. And that's something that's that I that's something that I am trying to change about myself. Not totally change, but you know, just understand that some people don't understand sarcasm or it doesn't bounce off of them well. Well, and like <laughs> Maybe those aren't your people, and that's okay. They can go hang out with other people who don't really enjoy sarcasm. And then everyone is great, and everyone's happy. And that's another thing that I don't I don't think I've stressed enough. Uh, also, just be kind to yourself, and be accepting of yourself. And if there are things you don't like, you have the power to change them. Mm. Mm. And if you do that, then you won't be mad at other people all the time, and you won't I said this already, but you won't feel the need to bullshit online and get mad because somebody's wearing two different socks. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And if you have a lot of rage, there's plenty of ways to get it out besides anger management, which if you have a lot of rage, you should probably hit that up. But, I mean, there's things like uh, exercise. Um, maybe if you, like, change your diet, although I've heard doing keto you'll be angry for like two weeks it's like quitting cigarettes and then you hit ketosis and everything's fine dandy um but you know just regina find George, something. regina george's therapist taught her to channel her rage into sports see 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 but you know i mean, there's just there's so many things take a pillow give it a couple whops because it's a pillow and while it might be a little sad that you're abusing it it's it's a pillow but don't get a feather pillow because come on people Peta, come yeah. on there's, um, you're just there's a there's a lot out there for you to pursue that would make you happy, mm-hmm. which goes back to what Casey was saying. If you're happy, there's no and you more. know it. Clap your hands. <laughs> to the I left now. <laughs> Take it back now, y'all. Four hops this time. <laughs> I think. I think we've run out of steam. I think we're devolving. I don't know. I'm ready to do the cha-cha slide. Oh, I love the cha-cha slide. I can fuck with the cha-cha slide. Oh, hell yes. If anybody has anything insulting to say about the cha-cha slide, This is not the podcast for you. Please see Uh -uh. yourself out. It also means that you didn't listen to a fucking word of this entire episode. (laughs) (laughs) Why do you never listen to us? Oh my god! Don't just fast forward to the end. You miss all the good stuff. No, you're right. I think I think I've gotten out all my rage today. I had a lot of traffic rage, so I probably Ooh. probably emphasized that a little a little too much. Yeah, that's fine. Well, audience, you can interact with us in healthy, constructive ways on the Facebook, Instagram, both Millennial Monologue Podcast. The Twitter at Millennial Mo Pod, um, iHeartRadio, I Apple iTunes, Apple Podcast, I I I I I, I. <laughs> <laughs> Spotify, Anchor.fm, all Millennial Monologue, um, and we have an email. Mm-hmm. That is Millennial Monologue Podcast at Gmail you said it yeah also i realized how much i is used in media forms spotify iHeartRadio, and then apple turned into apple podcast but it used to be itunes just saying i think there's still itunes but just apple podcast is its own yeah. thing i'm a jig yeah no there's there's still itunes but it's like games now instead of music because now they also have Apple Music, so they just separated into more things, so that you have to pay for more things. This is just me ranting about Apple now. So um, capitalism. <laughs> I say as I, you know, have like forty different Apple devices. Good job, Morgan. <laughs> <laughs> no, so yeah, follow us, like us, comment, Rate. write us, oh, and review us. Give us five stars. Mm-hmm. 
I can only review us once a day. So, you know, <laughs> eventually we're going to get to like 40 reviews. But right now it's just like <laughs> two. <laughs> we know you love us, people. Tell the internet. Yeah. I mean, if you're listening and we know you're listening because the government allows us to use analytics and um, <laughs> we can see you. We know where you live. We know what you did last summer. I don't want to know what you did last summer. We know you're watching Love is Blind Reunion right now. Shh, Casey! I'm only halfway through. I'm only on episode six. <laughs> After this, I'm going to watch the reunion special. I'm probably going to binge this all night. Then watch the reunion. Anyways. <laughs> anyway. Now that we've plugged everything that we enjoy in life. I'm going to say that it all sounds good. Mm-hmm. 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 Let's do it. Bye. 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 <laughs> we just let out all the stress. <laughs> <laughs> ha ha <ma. laughs>